G'day Brewers. In this video, I'm going to show you six things you probably didn't know about dissolved oxygen in beer and why your beer is probably already oxidized. Let's get brewing. So every brewer knows that dissolved oxygen in beer is a bad thing. Dissolved oxygen can cause all sorts of damage in beer. And if you're not in control of it, you're going to have much less flavor stability and a much shorter shelf life of your beer. Now, if you're putting your beer into a can and out into the market, it's really important that you make sure that you don't pick up dissolved oxygen in your beer prior to sending it out into the market. G'day, my name is Hendo. I'm from the Rockstar Brewer Academy. I help professional brewers all over the world brew amazing, world-class, award-winning beer with quality, consistency, and passion. If you want to know more about that, check out my website. I'll leave a link in the description below. So the first thing you need to know about dissolved oxygen in beer is the difference between oxygen ingress of actual dissolved oxygen versus oxidation. So the word oxidation or oxidize gets thrown around quite a lot by professional brewers and it's often misused. Oxidation is basically a chemical reaction that causes the loss of electrons. Oxidation is the loss of electrons and reduction is the gaining of electrons. If you think about types of oxidation that's out there, rust is a type of oxidation. If you think about getting an apple and slicing it in half and leaving it on your kitchen bench top, it's going to go brown after a while. And that is indeed oxidation at work. Oxidation can be caused by oxygen. Oxygen is the quintessential oxidizer, but it can also be caused by other chemicals as well. For example, hydrogen peroxide, which you can find in lots of the different brewery cleaning chemicals out there. Oxidation is one thing, which is basically the chemical changes that occurs, but dissolved oxygen is the ingress of O2 molecules into your beer. And because oxygen is the quintessential oxidizer, it's the main chemical in beer that causes oxidation. So the next thing you need to know about dissolved oxygen in beer is what damage can be caused to beer by dissolved oxygen. We all know that it causes damage, but what damage can it cause? For example, loss of hop aroma and flavor is the very first thing to go. Hop aroma and flavor compounds are very, very delicate and they disappear very, very quickly. Ever wonder why after you spend so much money on dry hop that you don't have that punchy hop aroma that you desire? Well, chances are it's because of dissolved oxygen. The next thing that's going to happen is conversion of residual alpha acetyl lactate, which is the diacetyl precursor into diacetyl. So if you have a can of beer, which is a D-bomb, a diacetyl bomb, oxygen and oxidation may well be the reason why that's happened. The next thing that usually happens is oxidation of malt compounds. So rather than your beer to having a nice malt sweetness and being fresh, it can double down into compounds like sweet toffee and sherry and all that sort of stuff that doesn't leave the beer tasting that fresh. The next thing can happen is trans 2 nonanol. So trans 2 nonanol is a papery or cardboard taste that can happen in your beer. Another problem that can happen is beer discoloration. So if you've ever had a can of beer which is heavily oxidized, putting it against side by side against a beer that's not so oxidized, you'll see that that color is darker. It's the same principle that happens when you cut an apple in half and leave it on your kitchen bench and it turns brown. But overall, oxygen and oxidation of your beer leads to less flavor stability and loss of that sense of freshness in your beer. The next thing you need to know about dissolved oxygen in beer is that measuring dissolved oxygen is very, very challenging. It doesn't take that much dissolved oxygen in your beer to damage it. So in the brewery, we measure dissolved oxygen in parts per billion. So you may have heard of a part per million or PPM before, maybe when you're doing your water chemistry. One part per billion is one one thousandth of a part per million. So it's tiny, tiny, tiny amounts of oxygen that can damage your beer. Typically, 100 parts per billion is an acceptable level of dissolved oxygen in beer. But if you are brewing sort of the modern hazy IPA styles, half that amount, so 50 parts per billion, is usually the maximum acceptable amount of dissolved oxygen in beer. Now, 
let's just go back to 100 parts per billion. Let's not set the bar too high with regards to dissolved oxygen. Okay, so what does 100 parts per billion look like in terms of a volume of air in a volume of beer? If air is 21% oxygen, that means that we can ingress about 0.45 milliliters of air per 1,000 liters of beer to get 100 parts per billion. If you are an American brewer, that's 0.018 fluid ounces to seven barrels. That's not a lot to play with. It's certainly not zero, but it's not a lot to play with. And as Charlie Bamforth once said, a thimble full of air can ruin an Olympic sized swimming pool full of beer. Because the amount of dissolved oxygen in beer or the threshold before serious damage occurs in beer is so small, we need to be able to measure it. Because the amounts are so small, the instruments that a brewer requires are, are very, very sensitive and therefore they're really, really expensive. So that's the challenge in measuring dissolved oxygen in beer. The next issue that you probably didn't know about dissolved oxygen in beer is the disappearing nature of dissolved oxygen. This is where dissolved oxygen becomes really insidious in beer. So once dissolved oxygen ingresses your beer, it begins the process of oxidation almost immediately. So it causes molecules in the beer to start throwing electrons. And when they start throwing electrons and going through the process of oxidation, those chemical compounds become unstable and need to react with something to become stable again, therefore forming those staling compounds. In the process of losing the electrons and the oxygen doing the oxidizing, the oxygen itself is consumed. So when the oxygen itself is con consumed, it can no longer be measured by your expensive DO meter. That's really, really insidious stuff. So if the oxygen bonds with other molecules and causes them to oxidize, that means that you can no longer measure the amount of DO in your beer, even with your expensive DO meter. So you're probably wondering how long it takes for this chemical reaction to take place. Well, it happens in as little as 20 to 25 minutes. So that basically means that within about 25 minutes, almost all of the dissolved oxygen that was introduced into your beer disappears and can no longer be measured by your DO meter. So let's have a think about that for a second and what that means. I had a, a brewer come up to me a few months ago and said, oh, hey, Hendo, I've got this beer. It's gone stale and old. And I, I took some cans and I took them around to a friendly brewery around the corner, ran it through their DO meter, and I didn't have any dissolved oxygen. What happened? And I said, well, when did you can this beer? And this brewer said, well, I canned it three months ago. And I said, well, the dissolved oxygen has already done its damage and it has disappeared because it did its damage in the first 20 to 25 minutes of it being introduced. Dissolved oxygen is just plain evil in that regard, okay? The next thing you probably didn't know about dissolved oxygen in beer is the cumulative nature of DO and the damage that it can cause. So. If you ingress oxygen into your beer and then it oxidizes and consumes that oxygen and the dissolved oxygen is no longer detectable via DO meter, that means that any dissolved oxygen measurement that you take with a DO meter only reflects a real-time snapshot of the level of dissolved oxygen in the moment. Any previous ingress of oxygen is not counted in that real-time measurement using your really expensive DO meter. And so, for example, let's say you've transferred a beer from a fermentation vessel to a bright beer tank, and you, let's say you ingressed about 75 parts per billion of oxygen during that transfer. Well, the next morning, you're going to come in and all that DO is going to be gone and not measurable. And then when you can your beer, let's say you take a can of beer off your canning line and you go and take a DO reading of that can and it is also 75 parts per billion, that doesn't mean that the beer has only ever been exposed to 75 parts per million of DO. What that means is that initial 75 parts per billion from your transfer from FV to Bright has disappeared, and now you've ingressed another 75 parts per billion as you've canned the beer. So it's not 75 parts per billion that your beer has been exposed to, it's actually 150 parts per billion. And that's why dissolved oxygen is so evil.
Before I tell you about ways in which you can minimize the pickup of oxygen in your beer, I invite you to join my free Facebook group. It's called Quality Focus Pro Brewers. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. So what are the things that you should do in a brewery in order to prevent dissolved oxygen ingress into your brewery? Now, I get it. DO meters are very, very expensive. Now, my advice to you is if you can afford one, get one, okay? They're not cheap. I think the cheapest one starts at about $6,000 and they go upwards to about $30,000. I can't stress enough. They are an amazing tool and probably the number one investment that you can make in order to prevent dissolved oxygen pickup in your beer. There's a few different models out there. You've got the Hamilton Beverly, you've got the Pentair Gehalter meter, you've got the Huck Orbisteer, and you've got my personal favorite, which is the Anton Pass Box. Whatever you choose to get, having a DO meter in your brewery is the only way to prevent dissolved oxygen pickup in your beer. Now, Let's say, for instance, you can't afford a DO meter. You've got to put a price on your beer. Let's say you're about to build a brewery and you've spent, say, half a million dollars on stainless steel and canning equipment and all that sort of thing. Would you be prepared to spend just 5% on protecting that beer that you're going to make? Because the cost of your equipment is nothing compared to the cost of the beer that you're going to put through your brewery week in, week out. So if you think about the inputs that go into a tank of beer, into a batch of beer, you've got raw materials, labor, energy, all those sorts of inputs go into your beer. And if you ingress oxygen into that beer, well, all of those raw materials and labor and energy are gonna be wasted. It's all for nothing, basically. If you can't afford a DO meter at this point in time in your brewery's history, then what I would suggest to you is to take my mantra on dissolved oxygen management in the brewery, and that is think small, act big. Think small basically means being mindful of every little nook and cranny where that 0.45 milliliters of air or 0.018 fluid ounces of air can be. It might be in lots of places and it's hiding somewhere and you need to find it. One of the things we talk about in the Rockstar Brewer Academy is minimizing dissolved oxygen and strategies around doing that. And there's lots of places where DO can hide in your brewery. When I say think big, that means wherever you think small and find those little nooks and crannies of air, purge it excessively with a gas that's not oxygen, such as CO2. And if you take the think small, act big approach, you'll find that you will be able to get better management over DO pickup in your beer and wind up with longer shelf life and better flavor stability of your beer. If you like this video, I suggest you watch this one next. All my videos are about brewing award-winning beer using quality, consistency, and passion. Thanks heaps for watching. I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.